Well, this was a long trial, and I, uh, I counted the voir dire days because obviously we were here working. We didn't pick the jury. It took a while. I think it took us up to Wednesday to get a jury. So I have 19 days. I don't have three weeks. I have almost four weeks. Um, the next comment I want to make, uh, I'm not going to hold it against the defendant that he had his jury trial. Obviously, I cannot consider that. There was a lot of legal issues. Even a defendant in his own statement talked about three judges, two trials, uh, appeals in the state and the federal courts. Um, this case did take a long time, and as mentioned by the attorneys on both sides, uh, 25 years later, we're finally coming to a resolution, and that's for both families. That's a long time. Sometimes the justice system works slow, but I think eventually it comes to the right decision. Um, then I have to obviously look at the sentencing factors that were mentioned by the attorneys, gravity of the offense, the seriousness of the charge. Obviously, everybody agrees it's a serious charge. It's first degree intentional homicide. There's no higher felony in the state of Wisconsin. Um, the prison sentence has to be life in prison. I can't change that. The only issue for the court is whether the defendant will be eligible for parole. I will note for the record, the uh, pre-sentence report says no parole. The uh, district attorney says no parole. The uh, defense is asking me to grant parole for uh, Mr. Jensen after 20 years, and obviously we have all the requests of the victim's family, again, asking for uh, no parole. I look at uh, the defendant's character, which I have to do. Um, he's well-educated, uh, finished high school here in Kenosha, went on to college, uh, obtained good employment. I think the pre-sentence at one time uh, indicated that he was making over $200,000 a year, uh, very successful. Uh, started another business when he couldn't work as a broker. Uh, he does have three children. He has no prior criminal record. Um, so obviously those factors, the court has to take into consideration. Um, the other advantage that I have on this case and um, is the trial. It's not like it was a plea and I don't hear all the facts. The attorneys tell me what they want to he me to hear, and then I have to make a determination. But I did have the trial here, and uh, what I'm going to mention here, I'm looking at Mr. Uh, Jensen's letter that he read into the record on page 2. He indicates, now with the second verdict, I realize this case needs resolution, or there'll be no closure for my three boys. He goes on to say, I can work to understand and f find acceptance with the verdict. Well, I watched the trial, and I think the evidence was overwhelming that Mr. Jensen was guilty. And the jury came back with a pretty fast verdict. Some of the evidence that I'm going to mention that I think is overwhelming is the defendant that was in jail with Mr. Jensen, and Mr. Jensen wanted to get rid of a witness. And I think the conversation was something to the effect that we need to sit on this witness. And they were plotting this plan not to have this witness available because he gave pretty damaging testimony against Mr. Jensen. And it's Mr. Jensen who's on the jail phone records talking about this. We've got to get rid of this witness. Now, why would he do that? We got all the email conversations and the text messages and all the phone conversations 
that were recorded um, talking about poisoning, research, years of records. And uh, I know we were amazed how um, the computers in those days were so primitive. But all the evidence was there. Mr. Jensen plotting this murder. And then the interview with Pleasant Prairie Police Department, where he was untruthful. He denied having an affair with Kelly. It was on, it was on the video that we saw. And then all the computer searches, poison, antifreeze, And then all the penis pictures. I mean, that was rather strange. The torture that he put Julie Jensen through. So there's, there's multiple levels of evidence finding the defendant committed the murder. And then I, I read all the letters, and the issue for parole is, well, I want to be there for my boys. I want to help them, and I want to help my family. Well, that's a good thing. But what about Julie? She has nothing today. She's dead. She's never going to see her children get married, have successful lives, be there for the holidays. Um, he caused that. He's the one that put that in motion. He says, well, now my boys don't have two parents. Well, guess what? He's the one that murdered Julie to get the ball rolling. You know, and then there's other avenues that people can do if they don't get along with people, and that was mentioned by the state. We're all human beings. Sometimes we just don't get along in a marriage and things don't work out and other people do things that make us mad and some people stay married and they're unhappy for the rest of their lives or they work it out. And Mr. Jensen could have had that opportunity. He could have walked away. If he was having a difficult time with his wife, he could have divorced her, separated or whatever. But he chose not to do that. What he chose to do is to torture her for a long time. You know, this antifreeze, the theory that somebody would drink that to commit suicide, I don't buy that. That's not a way people commit suicide. It's torture. He was jealous. He was vengeful, uh, he manipulated people, he was a control person over Julie, committed a cruel act, um, and it happened for a long period of time. As, as mentioned by the state, it wasn't like somebody made a decision to shoot somebody within 10 seconds or whatever and it's over and it's a young person. He's a grown adult, married. And he tortured his wife for a long period of time, for years. You know, we go to funerals, and sometimes you wonder, what, what do I say to the family at a funeral? Well, sometimes we say, well, at least it was a quick death. The person didn't wake up or had a heart attack, and they died right away. At least they didn't suffer. Or if they had a major medical issue and they suffered, Sometimes we say, well, at least the suffering's over and they're in a better position right now. Well, in this case, there's no doubt in my mind that Julie Jensen suffered for a long time. And the evidence showed that through the trial, she did not have a good life for a period of time that she was married to Mr. Jensen. The harassment, the uh, 
antifreeze poisoning, the lack of calling a doctor when she was dying. It was a painful death and it was all caused by Mr. Jensen. You know, I, I look at the pictures that I have in front of me, they're pictures of Mr. Jensen with his children, but I still remember Julie Jensen's picture that we had during a trial. She was a loving mother. She loved her children. Both sides agreed to that. And she will never get to see her children grow up because she was murdered by the defendant. So this was planned out for a long time. It was intentional. It was researched with a purpose for evil. He's not getting any parole elig eligibility. It's too serious of a crime to depreciate. It was too vengeful. I have to, to consider the uh, need to protect the public from any further criminal activity based on all the factors I just put into the record. <clears throat> no parole, life imprisonment. That is the judgment of the court. He can do the rights of appeal in the back. I already did it. Thank you, Judge. 